anti-aging pills. Do you take them? Their soul as the fountain of youth in a capsule. But some could be wasting your money. Today I'll share three of the most hyped anti-aging supplements, Anamen, Resveratrol and Spermidine. What the science actually says, their risks and how to protect your health before you buy. I'm Dr. Kia. Let's go heart to heart. You've probably been told NMN can slow aging. NMN, which stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide, and its cousin NR, which stands for nicotinamide riboside, are supplements that boost NAD. NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, is a large molecule found in every cell in our body. It's essential for making ATP, adenosine triphosphate, the fuel our cells use for energy. Sounds amazing, right? Indeed, and in mice, boosting NAD improves health and even lifespan. But in humans, long-term studies don't exist. Will I take NMN right now? Not yet. Not until I see more solid long-term human data showing it is safe and effective. For now, I would rather focus on proven ways to boost my NAD naturally without a pill. Here are six proven ways. Move your body. High intensity interval training, strength training, even brisk walks fire up your mitochondria and raise NAD. Eat less often. Intermittent fasting or calorie moderation alerts your cells to make more NAD. Skip alcohol. Its toxic byproduct, acetaldehyde, drains your NAD like a leaky bucket. Hot and cold therapy. Saunas and cold plunges give your cells a stress workout that boosts NAD. Sleep like clockwork. A strong circadian rhythm keeps your NAD factory running smoothly. And finally, eat the building blocks like turkey, peanuts, mushrooms, dark green vegetables. All help your body make its own NAD. These six habits keep your NAD high and you don't need to gamble on unproven supplements to get the benefits. Resveratrol is a plant compound found in grapes, berries, and peanuts. Lab research suggests it can activate longevity-related pathways like CERT1, and some human studies link higher intake to better cardiovascular markers. However, it is poorly absorbed in the gut, and many animal studies use doses much higher than clinically practical for human use. Here are my reservations on routine resveratrol supplementation. Human evidence is very limited. Proof of benefits mostly come from animal studies. Poor absorption means higher doses are often required, raising side effects for risk and can cause nausea, diarrhea, cramps and other symptoms. It can also thin the blood and interact with blood thinners like aspirin, aliquis, or warfarin. Resveratrol is a phytoestrogen structurally similar to estrogen. Human safety data on resveratrol supplement is so far lacking. So if you want to take resveratrol supplements, I do not recommend higher than 500 to maximum 1000 mg per day. Spermidine is a naturally occurring compound found in foods like wheat germ, soybean, and certain aged cheese. It is linked to autophagy, the body's process of recycling and cleaning out damaged cells, which can support cellular health as we age. Some observational studies have observed higher dietary intake of spermidine with lower risk of cardiovascular disease and improved cognitive function. However, there are no clinical trials on spermidine supplementation showing anti-aging benefits. 
So promoting spermidine as an anti-aging pill right now isn't just hype, it is reckless. If you want more evidence-based supplementation reviews, hit subscribe now. It helps you see past the hype and make informed choices. Despite promising science, most anti-aging supplements fall short due to six factors. First one is poor absorption. Many compounds are broken down before they reach the bloodstream. For example, NMN may require sublingual or liposomal delivery to survive digestion. And resveratrol is rapidly broken down, so less than 1% reaches your blood. If you take 100 mg, you might just get 1 mg where it is available in the bloodstream for your cells to use. So formulation matters, but only a few, like curcumin with pepper, have proven bioavailability boosts in human studies. Second, low or misleading doses. For example, some NMN products have contained no detectable NMN or too much. Like I said, the NMN my wife and I took almost certainly contained too much in the single capsule and we both developed severe itch and flushing because of that. And then hidden labeling, for example, spermidine is often buried inside proprietary complexes without the actual amount listed. Long-term safety data and clinical trial data are lacking in most anti-aging supplements including in all of the three supplements I have talked about today. And then potential drug interactions. For example, resveratrol may interfere, as I said, with blood thinners like aspirin, aliquis, rivaroxaban, warfarin. Finally, contamination risks. Very important. Many studies have found anti-aging supplements spiked with banned drugs, including steroids and prescription-only stimulants. So, how do I judge an anti-aging supplement then? Well, I look for high-quality human evidence, randomized clinical trials carry the most weight, and then greater than 99% purity with third-party certificates of analysis is always very important for me. No unnecessary fillers, dyes, or additives. Clear, transparent dosing. And if a company cannot prove what's in the bottle, I just walk away. Some supplements show real potential, but so far, none have proven they can reverse aging. The best use as a targeted addition to a broader health plan not as a magic bullet. Follow me and I'll keep you up to date. I'm Dr. Kiat. Let's keep going heart to heart.